This video is about assessing the hydration status of a child who presents to your paediatric emergency department with gastroenteritis. And here's the topic in a nutshell. So assessing hydration is really difficult. It's subjective and there's a lot of intraorator uh, variability, which means that, you know, if you get two doctors to assess the same child, they come up with different answers of how dehydrated they are. The absolute gold standard is weight. And what that means is you compare today's weight with a recent weight of the child. That has to be a dry weight, a naked weight, and you know, it has to, so the child has to have all their, their clothes off. And more importantly, you have to have scales that are calibrated the same. So it might not be helpful if the child's been weighed on two different scales, but this can still give you an idea. The biggest issue with the weight is that a lot of children just don't come in with a recent weight, um, but there's still use in weighing them today because if you weigh them now, then they come back in three days time. You can see whether the child has, you know, lost a lot of water since then. There's a few different scores that people have tried to come up with. I'll touch on one of them, the clinical dehydration scale. Um, all of these are pretty unreliable. They, they suffer from this big problem of inter-observer variation where just different people grade the same child quite differently on the scale. So they're not that useful and they're not super well validated. But I'll touch on one of them because, you know, the measures are often things that people talk about when they're assessing a child. So this scale was basically devised to break the assessment of dehydration down into four categories. And so you look at the general appearance, you know, whether the child's normal or limp, you look at their eyes, to see if they're normal or sunken, if the mucous membranes are moist or dry, and if the tears when they cry are present versus absent. And each thing can be scored either a zero, one or two, and the higher scores are worse. And then basically you put the scores together and you come up with a output to say whether the child's dehydrated. But the big problem with this is it's not super well validated and it just doesn't correlate that well to actual clinical outcomes. So even though I would advise you, you measure these things when you're examining a child, I wouldn't rely too heavily on the score itself. What else can you use then instead of this score? Well, dark urine in a slightly older child, so the child has to be over eight, is actually quite a reliable sign of dehydration. That's because there's very good correlation between the color of urine and its osmolality. And osmolality, in turn, corresponds to dehydration. So if you can say a child over eight has dark urine, you can actually say they're quite likely to be dehydrated. You can't use specific gravity in the same way. It just, especially in younger children, it's just not validated to have the same kind of predictive values in terms of the clinical outcomes and the, the rest of the assessment. The absolute key thing to mention, as I mentioned in the assessment video, is if a child has completely normal fluid intake and they've got completely normal urine output, they're highly unlikely to be dehydrated. That's a well-validated statement. There's good evidence in the medical literature to support this statement. So normal fluid intake, normal urine output, in all but the rarest of cases, the child's going to be well hydrated. The next video we'll be talking about is the investigations and initial management of dehydration um, related to gastroenteritis and then the uh, video after that will be about rehydration specifically.